across the southern grain growing region, it's been common to wait for opening rain, spray for weeds, then put in the crop. But interim results from trials at the University of Adelaide's Roseworthy campus are turning that notion on its head. One of the key messages for weed management used to be to delay sowing so you have more time for weeds to come up, then you kill them off and plant a crop which hopefully will be nice and clean. What we are showing through our trial work is that these days it works just in reverse. Uh, when I was a student um, 20 years ago, we were learning about uh, delayed seeding for managing ryegrass and uh, getting that effective knockdown out and uh, controlling, controlling the seed bank, running it down so we had a clean crop. Now, as Gurjeet mentioned before, times have changed. We've evolved another, not just herbicide resistance, but we've changed the ecology of these weeds and uh, they're germinating for a longer time throughout the growing season. And what we've seen here is that uh, what didn't work 20 years ago is actually our best option in this environment. Associate Professor Dr Gurjeet Gill and agronomist Ben Fleet are in the final stages of trials at this South Australian site. It's part of a five-year GRDC investment looking at weed management across different rainfall zones in South Australia, Victoria and Western Australia. We're looking at uh, improving uh, management of ryegrass as well as brome grass at other sites, not here obviously, uh, by using what, what we call cultural or non-chemical tactics for weed control in combination with herbicides to, uh, to one, minimise the impact of weeds on our crop yields, and two is to enhance the suppression of weeds so we're minimising their seed set. The Roseworthy campus is in a mid-range rainfall zone, about an hour north of Adelaide. We're looking at a very nasty weed population with multiple resistance and a huge seed bank, um, which is going to set a challenge for any grower. In the wheat plots, they trialled three seeding times in May and June, four different pre-emergent and post-emergent herbicide options, and three seeding rates, from 100 seeds per square metre to 300. The canola crops were sown in two lots, also with four herbicide options and a low and high density seeding rate. Here we go, Gergi. This is our high density with our effective uh, uh, pre-emergent herbicides. Dry sown just before the opening rains. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Was it 21st of May? Yep. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot of ryegrass in that at all. No. And then we come down to uh, low seed density uh, with no effective pre-em, just a knockdown alone. And uh, you can see how damaging that ryegrass can be when you let it get bad enough. A clear trend has emerged, a triple threat to suppress weeds. Timely sowing, early sown crops into warm soils, long days, high light intensities are powerful tool in weed management. So if you have the right break to the season, make use of that opportunity to get a good crop competition. And these days with variable rate technology and precision farming, it in fact is possible for growers to only be increasing seed rates in the weedy patches or weedy areas. Combine it with timely early sown crop. But the third prong in all this is still be using good effective herbicide options. All right, as you can see, Gurdjieff, we've gone from that early time of sowing. And if we go down to our late time of sowing, so this is a month later, this is the one with our high end herbicide control and our high seeding rate. But there's still quite a bit of ryegrass you can see coming through. So it just highlights that you need all three parts of your package. Yes. Early sowing, yep. good seed rate, and good herbicide option. Knock it all together and you'll get a good result. And it's not just in the higher rainfall zone, the three-pronged approach is working. Trials in the Mallee and Eyre Peninsula show similar results with the denser seeding rate. So higher yield, better grain size, where we're we getting more suppression of weeds through going to those 200 seeds per square metre, even in those low rainfall environments. With ryegrass in particular popping up throughout the growing season and becoming more resistant to herbicide, the two researchers had theorised that earlier, denser seeding 
would produce better results. But even they have been surprised. Well, particularly the sowing time effect has really surprised us in how dramatic it is. When you double your density from 100 to 200 plants per square metre, you can halve the seed set of ryegrass. We're still getting that coming through uh, consistently now, but sowing time responses have surprised us. The majority of the sites in this project, we've found that the delayed seeding was a, a double whammy of um, increased weeds and lower yield. So that's a pretty good lesson. One of the big factors in all of this is the change in how long weed seeds remain dormant. In the past, almost all your weeds popped up at much the same time, but that's no longer the case. We are seeing shift in weed behaviour because these tactics of intensive cropping are selecting for greater seed dormancy. And what, they, what we are doing through this uh, cropping system is killing off a lot of the low dormancy parts of the weed population and selecting for the high dormancy. We see weeds just keep coming up for a month or six weeks after the opening of the season. The same program also works in open pollinated and hybrid canola. So we come down here, Gurdjie. Mm -hmm. So we've got our, with our OP canola here in our first time of sowing. Mm. We've got the uh, lower density on this side yeah. and a higher density on this side. Yeah. So um, you can see there's probably Massive. more density in pods, I'd say, there. Massive potting effect. What if we have a look at the ryegrass and we yeah. swing through probably around here somewhere and have a look? Yeah. And you can see it's pretty good compared to the cereals. Yeah, but... it's a good herbicide option. And then what about here in this high seed rate? It's mm. just the odd one there, but they're yeah. pretty well shrouded out by the canopy. Yeah, it's quite impressive potting in, yeah. the, in the timely sown canola. They've found the vigour of hybrid canola could also pay dividends, particularly if the crop goes in a bit late. The difference is this is an open pollinated type canola mm. and that's a hybrid canola there. So you can see the height difference, but mm, mm. that's pretty obvious. Just the hybrid vigour. And they're very similarly specced canola, but if we have a look into the crop there and mm. look maybe at the ryegrass, it seems to be doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Being able yeah. to get enough light through that canopy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about in the hybrid? How does that look? Yeah, so if we have a look in here. There's still ryegrass there, but it's a lot smaller. But the size of ryegrass heads or ryegrass plant is not even half of yeah. what's in there. All the data will be collated after the crops are harvested, but the researchers are confident the mid-trial results are pretty clear. It's no point being in one camp of all herbicide or all cultural. You need to take the best of everything and combine it to try to get your best of your weed control. Mm -hmm.